And finally, new rule, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but this country needs to treat children better. I know, it's crazy, right? <laughs> Me sticking up for kids? It's like Mike Pence fighting for gay adoption. <laughs> Even when I was a kid, I didn't like kids. <laughs> I remember being in kindergarten thinking, these people are such children. <laughs> Why am I even here? We're, we're drinking milk and napping. I could be doing this at home. <laughs> but a few weeks ago, I saw that a second grade teacher in Arizona had posted her pay stub, and it went viral. Probably because she's one of the people we trust to care for and educate our children. And she makes 320 bucks a week. Jesus. We pay such lip service to kids. They're the future, our greatest natural resource. We'll do anything for them. And then we nickel and dime their teachers. If we really think children are our future, shouldn't the people who mold their minds make more than the night manager at GameStop? <laughs> There is a revolt brewing in the teacher's lounge these days in schools all across this country, and it's long overdue. Time's up, meet pencils down. <laughs> Teachers are tired of being told what Sarah Palin once said of a teacher, that her reward is in heaven. <laughs> Maybe, but the rent's due here on Earth. <laughs> Elizabeth Millich, the teacher who posted her pay stub, wrote, I buy every roll of tape I use, every paper clip I use, every Sharpie I grade with, every snack I feed kids who don't have them. How do people, even the burdened taxpayer, justify this? We were all kids once. We remember our teachers. You have those moments of early learning imprinted in your brain. A teacher was your first mentor, your first role model. If you grew up in Florida, your first lay. <laughs> in West Virginia, where the revolt started, teachers were just asking for a 5% pay raise. Not a lot, but it helps when you have to pay for your own paper, your own pencils, and now your own bullets. Here's an idea. Don't give the teachers guns. Give them a living wage. They're, they're... they're not asking for the world. Just enough of a raise so they don't have to drive an Uber three nights a week. Teachers, it turns out, do drive Ubers and work as cashiers at Hardee's on weekends and sell their blood plasma to make ends meet. It isn't supposed to be a side hustle, teaching. In Kentucky, teachers are protesting Governor Matt Bevin's attempt to reduce their pension fund. Bevin said the teachers have a, quote, thug mentality. He said, it's about just straight up wanting more than your fair share. So true. You know, when I think greedy, the first thing that comes to mind <laughs> is a public school teacher who takes the bus to work and spends her tax refund on crayons. <laughs> If we really cared about kids, would we give them an education secretary who needs to stay after class? <laughs> if we really cared about kids, it wouldn't be so hard for states to pass laws against marrying them. That's right. Fun fact, child marriage is legal in every state. What? Yes, true. In America, you don't even have to start your own crazy religion to have sex with children. You can just marry them. And that's every state, not just the Waffle House states. <laughs> wow. More than 200,000 children were married in America over the past 15 years, some as young as 10. In 24 states, there is no minimum age to marry. It's me too for Hollywood, but we're okay with this. And again, this is coming from me. Me, someone who has no use for children. <laughs> and don't even get me started on babies. No, I don't want to hold your little <laughs> Roswell alien. <laughs> S 
Some people call kids gifts from God. I call them reasons for earplugs. <laughs> I don't like seeing kids. I don't like hearing kids. I do not like kids on a plane. I do not like kids on a train. <laughs> But as much as I personally can't stand to be around them, I would rather American children be well-educated, productive, contributing citizens as opposed to what they otherwise might become, useless burdens on society.